Spark Books here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, Radical Honesty, by Brad Blanton. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. Radical Honesty, first published 1993, this edition 2004, is a guide to help you tell the truth. We all lie, all the time, and it's only through extreme honesty that we can escape from the moralism that surrounds us and truly be ourselves. Key idea number one, mind dominates body and moralism. First, the womb. The problem is applying fixed rules to a fluid, complex world. Lawyers do this when applying rigid law to real life cases. Field dependent. Imagine a rod inside a square frame. Like clock hands, rod and frame turn independently. Dark room, only rod and frame visible. Frame stops moving but rod continues. The rod is vertical when. Field dependent people say parallel to the frame. Field independent people know the frame isn't a reliable reference point and use their bodies to determine rod verticality. Field dependent moralists field dependence is false. A few months after conception, consciousness dawns and experience begins. Everything seems timeless. On some level, you still remember this experience. Like everyone else, you long for eternity. Nope, because you learn how to behave after birth. The mind overtakes the being, says the author. Your womb-born clarity is gone. Religion and philosophy aim to recapture lost purity. The author says it's a slow killing disease. Morality, he says. Moralism means mind dominates body. Parents teach their children morals to do what's best. This helps them stay safe and behave properly. Children learn negative behaviors from their parents. Stephen made a mess while making lemonade in the kitchen, as told by the author. His parents were furious and punished him. He blamed his parents and said he hated them. Normal, survival mechanism. Stephen imitated his parents' blame shifting and anger. The problem is applying fixed rules to a fluid, complex world. Lawyers do this when applying rigid law to real life cases. Field dependent. Imagine a rod inside a square frame. Like clock hands, rod and frame turn independently. Dark room, only rod and frame visible. Frame stops moving but rod continues. The rod is vertical when. Field dependent people say parallel to the frame. Field independent people know the frame isn't a reliable reference point and use their bodies to determine rod verticality. Field dependent moralists field dependence is false. Key idea number two, lying hurts us all. Lie, we constantly lie, not just small things. Most adults live a lie they learned in adolescence. Second, emotional truth. People rarely admit how they feel because of others' reactions. You must also be honest about how it felt. For example, if you had an affair, you're lying otherwise. Third level truth telling involves living the truth. It's when you admit that your true identity, your being, is different from your public identity. This means admitting your vanity, egotism, and desires. The author admits he wrote his book to become famous and help millions. He admired Jesus. Being so honest is difficult. Try, though, how, read on. Adolescents ask, who am I? Human nature wants a single, definitive answer. So you pretend that your response, your persona, is who you are. This is far from the only way people lie. We all lie, and it hurts. In childhood, you believe there are fixed moral rules to follow. You learn to lie as a teen. More follows. Adults keep secrets, even from close friends. Lying is a survival tactic and a slow killer. Like moralism, it promotes mind dominance. It's incurable, but telling the truth makes it manageable. Not just minor indiscretions. True honesty. It's called radical honesty. Truthfulness has three levels. First, present the facts. Secrets kept from loved ones hold people back. Mental and physical health are improved by admitting lies. Second, emotional truth. People rarely admit how they feel because of others' reactions. You must also be honest about how it felt. For example, if you had an affair, you're lying otherwise. Third level truth telling involves living the truth. It's when you admit that your true identity, your being, is different from your public identity. This means admitting your vanity, egotism, and desires. The author admits he wrote his book to become famous and help millions. He admired Jesus. Being so honest is difficult. Try, though, how, read on. Key idea number three, radical honesty means telling the whole, uncomfortable truth. Stop lying and tell the truth. That's radical honesty. Implementing is difficult. Imagine you've slept with your husband's best friend and must confess. You may think being honest means telling your husband this. You'd probably argue and resent each other, maybe forever. Truthfulness isn't radical. It means being uncomfortably real in every detail. Radical honesty means telling the whole truth, however uncomfortable. Radical honesty means telling your husband how often you had sex, if you had orgasms, what you did afterward, how much you enjoyed it, etc. 
telling your husband the basics isn't enough, he needs the full picture. Again, morality, when discussing this, people usually use evaluative language, referring to rights and wrongs, use descriptive language for honesty, stop justifying your actions or waiting for your partner's judgment, recognize what happened and how you felt. That's difficult, your relationship benefits, long term, it reduces stress, lying exhausts us physically, this honesty saves lives. We're a repressed society, we're closer to being open about our sexual desires, but it's still a taboo subject. Neurosis, which the author defines as refusing to accept what's happening now, drives all this repression. Neurotics want to change their lives, denying sexual feelings, anger, grief, or anything else is unhealthy. Even in his own psychotherapy sessions, the author recommends the same approach. Being honest helps solve such problems. Anger is something we often repress. Let's see. Key idea number four, repressing your anger isn't self-sacrifice. You've heard this tale, a grenade is thrown by an enemy soldier. A soldier dives helmet first onto a grenade. Everyone survives except him, and eventually told her husband she resented him not turning off the game. Just saying it made her realize her father did the same thing 30 years ago. She wouldn't have made that breakthrough without being angry. And anger isn't always justified. Can you resent aging parents or noisy babies? True, they can't help it. You may still get angry, so let yourself feel. Don't believe moralism. Repressing anger harms relationships. No, be honest. Right? Sure. Self-sacrifice isn't always heroic. Like the soldier covering the grenade, you may cover your anger, absorbing its full force when it explodes. This seems noble, like you're sparing others. You're foolish, unlike the hero. You must release your anger for your own and others' sakes. Holding on to anger isn't self-sacrifice, it's repression. Angry people resent their friends and family. You think hiding your true feelings is a favor, but it's not. Nobody likes being lied to or having their feelings hidden, so bottling up anger makes things worse. So vent, that means saying it as it is, without trying to make it reasonable or moral. A couple fought with the author during therapy, and said David was unresponsive. She mentioned coming home stressed and him not turning off the TV. David told her to wait until commercials. Both were looking to the author to decide who was right and who was wrong. So what, her anger was key. And eventually told her husband she resented him not turning off the game. Just saying it made her realize her father did the same thing 30 years ago. She wouldn't have made that breakthrough without being angry. And anger isn't always justified. Can you resent aging parents or noisy babies? True, they can't help it. You may still get angry, so let yourself feel. Don't believe moralism. Repressing anger harms relationships. No, be honest. Key idea number five, telling the truth is vital for any relationship. Four failed marriages don't make the author look like he knows what makes a successful relationship. People joke, being in love is beautiful and magical, but it requires sacrificing your own identity. You're not doing it right if you don't involve your whole self. He says it does. Each of his marriages and divorces have been successful, and he remains on good terms with former partners for co-parenting. He argues that divorces aren't the real tragedy. Most non-splitting couples have bad relationships. Truthfulness is vital for any relationship. We've seen examples of relationship communication. What's behind such communication? Martin Buber said people have two basic speaking attitudes. Two were named I, you and I, it, and they're basically you. Even though you'll always use I, that word has two meanings. I, you acknowledges that your partner is an individual with complex feelings. I, it implies you're referring to an object, not a conscious being. The author suggests using clear, declarative statements like I resent you for these encourage partners to be seen as beings, not things. I, communication usually leads to fighting. Being honest with your partner is a serious commitment, so the author suggests getting to know each other well. Tell each other your life stories, including sexual histories, in detail. Masturbating in front of each other is also recommended. After that, take turns talking for half an hour about each other's good and bad qualities. Truthfulness means this. Being in love is beautiful and magical, but it requires sacrificing your own identity. You're not doing it right if you don't involve your whole self. Key idea number six, take responsibility to abandon moralism and live an honest life. Our lives are fast paced and stimulating. Our bodies aren't designed to be this busy all the time, so it's no wonder we're stressed. Moralizing makes things worse. Stop moralizing about right and wrong. Describe your emotions. True, it'll take you far. How can you free your mind from stress and return to your true self? Problem solving means telling the truth. Psychologists can help, but not always. Taking responsibility and implementing plans are key. Take responsibility to escape moralism and live an honest life. 
Your mental and physical selves are interconnected. So the author prescribes bodywork. Yoga helps people tune into their feelings. The patient must also exercise and eat well. It's important to take personal responsibility. Tom Jode meets a bitter, depressed mechanic with one eye in John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. Tom reminds him that the mechanic hasn't even cleaned up or covered his missing eye. It's simple, when you haven't done enough for yourself, it's easy to blame the world. The mechanic's attitude reveals internal conflicts. Our wishes and beliefs are often at odds. We resent how people treat us, our job, etc. But we also make apologies and excuses. Two voices argue inside us. Mind playing tricks again. It wants hope, change, and tradition. How to escape this paradox? Genuineness. We can only resolve this contradiction by embracing it within ourselves. Stop moralizing about right and wrong. Describe your emotions. True, it'll take you far. Growing up means lying to ourselves and others because we all become moralists. This harms our inner selves. Unflinchingly tell the truth, even if it's ridiculous or unreasonable. Then we're truly ourselves. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it. I appreciate you being here.